Hey guys, and welcome back to Pricing Your Food Products. As we mentioned last time, we're gonna talk about how costs fluctuate when you use different ingredients or your prices go up a little bit or you cross batches. So costs change more than you think because you, if you buy flour at one place and then flour at another place, it's two different prices. Then you buy, your know, butter goes up, then your maple syrup goes down and, you know, it's pretty crazy. And you have to keep track of all these price increases and decreases and labor rates and packaging and, and whatever. So your cost is constantly going up and down. You're trying to keep it as down as you can, though. So you could switch ingredients, new, different order, new vendor. Uh, you could switch packaging. You could switch labels. You could change your production process that you, know, you get a lot more yield for the same amount of labor. That changes your cost of goods. And you could just move kitchens. You know, when we switched co-packers, our costs went down and uh, we kept our margins the same. So we made a little bit more money, which is always good. So just to show you how fluctuation ingredients, which is the, probably the biggest uh, reason your costs would go up or down, is, you know, you have a pound of flour left. It's 50 cents a pound. But then for some reason, flour goes all the way up and you have to buy a 25 pound bag for a buck 50 a pound. Here's the calculation, just like calculating ingredients in your product costs. If you use that last remaining pound of flour in the one bag, and then you use two pounds from the new bag, the flour you used is three seventeen a batch compared to $1.50 a batch if you used all flour that cost the 50 cents a pound. So how this translates into cookies, for example, is that if your recipe made the 48 cookies, your flour would go up three cents a cookie. That three cents a cookie, as you've learned throughout this course, is going to translate to an increase of about 12 cents on the shelf. However, you don't have to make that switch if you don't want to. You can eat that cost, so it's a, kind of a sunk cost. Your flour goes up, oh well, I'm still going to retail my cookies for $2.99 or $3.99, whatever it may be. But if this is happening across a lot more of your ingredients and your costs go up 15, 20, 25 cents, that's an opportunity to look at your pricing and say, hey, maybe I should increase. So keep keep an eye on this. And this just basically, as I just said, the price increase acts like your entire product is going up. If it's three cents, five cents, 10 cents, whatever it may be, those pennies that we established in the first class, the pennies add up. And if you can shave the pennies off or add them onto your margin, increase your price, you make the same amount of money. The same is true with labels and packaging. If you have 500 labels left of your last printer and then you move over to another printer to print 10,000 labels, the product that has the 500 labels is a different cost than the product with the 10,000 labels. So you have to get rid of that 500 first and then you can switch over. It makes things a little bit easier. Same with packaging. Uh, jars are a little bit different. You know, For example, we order three pallets of glass at a time and you would pretty much run down that in four to five production runs and the packaging stays the same, but then you order from that same supplier, the freight may change, the pricing may change. So the costs do fluctuate. They just don't stay, stay the same. So this ultimately means that every single batch you make has a different cost. I know that's really hard to think about, but it's true. You know, your cost just doesn't say stay a dollar eighty a unit and you sell it for $6. This is why you need to keep track of it. And one uh, one good example is if you have the same labor rate, you're paying the same four people $15 an hour, but you're getting different yields, that ultimately is a different labor rate for whatever you're making, whether it's cookies or mustard or barbecue sauce or prepared meals. And because you have this price fluctuation, ultimately a lot of your margins are, are impacted, but either positively or negatively. But if you're not really a numbers person, find somebody who is, whether you hire a bookkeeper or an accountant or just like a financial person who may work a couple hours a week to make sure that your costs of goods are right in line with the margins that you need to make your food business successful. So next up in the very last class of costing out your food product, we're going to go through 10 ways to reduce your product cost. See you there.